Hey everybody, this is Zach from Zach Entertainment, bringing you a brand new Zach Knits video. I really enjoyed making my dishcloth video, so I decided to put together this new Zach Knits episode to showcase my very first sock project. And also, if you haven't been keeping up with my blog, I've actually finished the dishcloth that I was working on in the, in, in the previous uh, Zach Knits episode. Um, this is my very first pair of socks. It's a plain vanilla sock. I figured that would be the best option to start off with, as I've never knitted socks before. I'm also writing down in my notebook every single move I make on this sock, so in the future, I can use this base pattern to knit all sorts of cool design socks. Uh, now as of this video, I'm currently knitting these socks using Magic Loop on size 3 Addy Turbo needles. Uh, but when I started these socks, I was actually working with DPNs or double pointed needles for short. The reason for the switch was the fact that I found DPNs to be pretty annoying to work with. My stitches were constantly slipping off and I would get all my stuff twisted around so my mum helped me switch it all over to Magic Loop. Um, I actually recorded some footage of me using DPNs so I put together a little split screen action to show off me working with both kinds of needles. So there you go, that was me working on DPNs compared with uh, comparing it to how I was doing my uh, Magic Loop. Now with uh, Magic Loop, basically <clears throat> on a sock like this, you have half your stitches on one needle, half your stitches on the other needle, and you have uh, a loop in the back, like a sort of a Hickey Mouse ear situation. Um, you, uh, you put the amount of stitches you put, um, like like with uh, DPNs, you put um, you put half your stitches on one needle, half your stitches on the other needle, and you have your cable coming out the back, your uh, cord. Um, once you uh, finish a row, I turn it around, and uh, I put the needles I was um, the needles I was knitting the stitches off of. I move those, I push those back into the stitches, and then I pull out the needle that I was knitting the stitches on too, and then I use that to knit the next row. It's uh, a lot easier in my opinion than D DPNs, and uh, I've been bombing along quite well on my uh, socks, to the point that as of this recording me, me, me recording this audio, because this is post-commentary audio because of the way I recorded this video, I've actually started, um, I've actually started working on my I, hill flap and I managed to complete my hill flap. I, I completed it. I did it. I actually did it. I actually completed my hill flap. I was so worried about the whole hill turn and picking up the side stitches in that, but I actually managed to pull it off. And uh, I'm gonna show you some footage of me working on my hill flap. So this is a uh, this is my hill flap. I've already done a little bit of it as I'm recording this clip. Um, <clears throat> now you can see there's a little bit of a difference in the pattern of it, but this is to enforce it. Basically, I've done a special kind of stitch in order to enforce it. You see, the, you could. See the difference between my normal stockinette and this hill flap, um, and you can also see the uh, the, uh, the ridge side. So these are um, these are what you will be picking up later to connect it with the uh, with the pack end of the sock. Um, I've put half of my stitches on some scrap yarn. I've used cotton. Um, I've used some um, cotton to to do that. And uh, what you do to make this special hill flap 
to enforce it is you you will be uh, slipping one. Knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, all the way into the end, and you end on a knit. Basically, on this, uh, on this side, because this is the, this is the right side of the whole flap. You will slip one first. Always start off with a slip, and then you will always end on a knit. So basically, it's just slip knit, slip knit, slip knit, slip knit, all the way down. And then you always end on a knit. So well, once you've finished your your one row on the right side, you will be turning your work around and uh, turning your work around to the wrong side, and then you will be slipping the first one as to pearl. Basically, you you uh, go in as to pearl, and you slip it off like you were purling without actually purling, and then you will purl all the way to the end completely all the way to the end and then turn it back around and and repeat what you did on the right side basically you just keep doing this to you have about um, well I was actually the way, the way I measured it I measured it using my thumb to the palm of my hand sort of sort of uh, I, Doing it that way, I was able to get a good size heel flap to where my shoe will not wear out my uh, sock. Because uh, if your heel flap is not long enough, your shoe is going to wear out these socks. That's why you're making this uh, special enforced heel flap to stop your uh, sock from, from um, you know, wearing the sock out. Now, I've actually, while doing this hill flap, I have actually uh, accidentally slipped at the wrong time or knitted twice or slipped twice. It was kind of difficult in the beginning to really get into a rhythm, but after the first, I don't know, six to eight rows of doing the hill flap, I was able to uh, get into a rhythm and I completed my hill flap. And, uh, I didn't record any footage of it, but I made my, I successfully made my hill turn, which I'll, I'll show a photo, I'm showing a photo of it on the screen if you can see. And, um, I also have completed my gusset. Basically, once you make the hill turn, the uh, hill turn is what, um, the hill turn is done using a kind of short row sort of thing. I wish I actually recorded some footage of that, but it's uh, it's, it's pretty easy. You do some short rows, and that will make your hill turn. But uh, after making your uh, hill turn, of course, you actually have to decrease the hill uh, turn row because uh, I'm uh, on this sock. I have 64 stitches total, which means I got 32 on each needle. But after doing the uh, hill hill turn. Um, I had to decrease my hill turn row back down to 32, and once you do that, you just basically you just keep going around and around and around until you get your, you know, your actual toe bit, your uh, your your foot bit long enough, and then at the end you uh, start decreasing again and use Kitchener stitch to uh, finish your toe, and your sock will be completed. Now, uh, I've not actually gotten that far yet. I'm currently on the part where I'm working on the actual foot bit. I'm uh, humming along on that. I've already been practicing how to do hitching to stitch. If you've been uh, keeping up with my blog, I've actually been, um, I actually practiced using kitchen to stitch on this little uh, earbud pouch. I'm gonna show that on the screen. Basically, it's a way of, uh, sealing up the toe and making it look like 
you know, make basically it's an invisible cast off, pretty much, and it makes it look like it. it Makes it look like it was never. There was no. There was no uh, gap between the both sides. Um, it was a. It was a bit of a hassle trying to learn how to do it. Um, I goofed. I royally goofed it up the first time I attempted Hitch and Juice Stitch, and I'm so glad I goofed it up on my earbud pouch rather than my sock. Cause that would have been terrible if I'd messed it up with my sock. So once I get to the end of my sock, I should be good to go. <clears throat> but, this is only the first sock. I have not started my second sock yet. So, let's hope I don't get second sock syndrome, as they call it. <laughs> um, I will, uh, I will probably do a live video of me knitting on my second sock. So yeah, I think that's about it on this, uh, Zach Knits video. Uh, don't forget to check out my blog because I'm going to be posting a, uh, a blog post to go alongside this this video that will be uh, talking a little bit more in details about the sock and uh, what I'm using as far as yarn and that and uh, more details on the uh, needles. If you like the video please give it a like and uh, subscribe for more Dylan videos because I will definitely be doing more in the future. Yeah, uh, don't forget to check out the blog. Uh, check out my social media. I got a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the whole works. Uh, that's about it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.